I'd like to introduce our presenter today, um, Daphne Crane. And uh, this presentation was prepared for you uh, by Daphne, uh, as well as Jennifer Howard, April Pike, and Yolanda Babenko Mould. All right, Daphne. Jennifer Howard um, is the primary author on this um, presentation. And unfortunately, Jennifer couldn't be with us today, but she did prepare a video. And Paul, if you could show that video now, um, that would be great. Hello, my name is Jennifer Howard. I am a newly appointed assistant professor at Memorial University of Newfoundland's Faculty of Nursing and a doctoral candidate at Western University Arthur Labatt's Family School of Nursing. I am going to be presenting on a classroom activity today entitled Five Minutes of Kindness that focuses on taking a compassionate approach to teaching during the COVID-19 global pandemic and beyond. By the end of this presentation, attendees will be able to demonstrate effectively how to utilize the five minutes of kindness activity. This is a voluntary learning activity for undergraduate students that promotes coping. It is used as an icebreaker activity that can be posted via online forums and during in-person or remote class time. For the current problem, post-secondary students are reported in the literature as experiencing social isolation during the COVID-19 restrictions and may not have had as many opportunities to develop coping skills and create meaningful connections that would be occurring under normal circumstances. This may be causing an increase in stress in addition to the normal stress that would arise during the transition into post-secondary undergraduate studies. For an introduction to the issue, Canadian baccalaureate students have had to adjust navigating to online remote learning due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This may prevent students from gaining meaningful connections that would have occurred during in-person classes, as well as continue to develop coping skills for everyday stress. Additionally, post-secondary educators are tasked to respond to students' increased need for a sense of belonging while delivery courses that would normally be in person via remote platforms. Instructors can use this activity at the beginning of class by asking the students to voluntarily participate in a discussion for any recent self-care activities or hobbies they've engaged in that promote feelings of enjoyment or instill a sense of calm and relaxation. The discussion is facilitated by educators to allow learners to share ways of engaging in hobbies and self-care activities that help promote coping with everyday stress. Doing so creates a sense of connection through shared interests among learners and can foster a sense of cohesion among students. Instructors who are adapting to remote delivery can use this activity to begin their lecture through facilitating a short discussion or through facilitating an online forum. Creating an online discussion for self-care may help learners who are engaging in clinical and theory courses and demonstrate compassion for one another through the voluntary activity of five minutes of kindness. The premise of this activity is to support learners as they further develop their coping skills in what is recognized as a challenging time in healthcare and society. The transition to post-secondary education often requires the learners to strengthen existing and develop new coping skills. The competing demands of undergraduate education may further precipitate stress for young adults in undergraduate programs as they are required to complete clinical hours and also theory hours for their coursework. Learning meaningful ways to cope with stressors associated with the demanding schedule in undergraduate programs is necessary in today's climate. The problem statement underpinning the development of this activity is how can educators assist students to further enhance their coping skills and foster a greater sense of belonging as part of the online learning experience during the pandemic and beyond. Lazarus and Folkman's transitional model of stress and coping provided a theoretical perspective to inform this learning activity. 
This model indicates that stressors include a transaction between an internal or external demand and an individual. The individual then appraises and interprets the stressor and their ability to cope, such as positively with adequate coping resources and responses, for example, emotional or problem focused, the same stressor may impact others differently and may invoke different stress responses. Lazarus and Folkman highlight that individuals who have adequate coping resources will experience fewer negative impacts of stress. For example, stress is not viewed as a loss or threat of harm. Lazarus and Folkman in 1984 described stress as an individual having a subjective response to an environmental stressor. Individuals consciously or subconsciously appraise the stress as either primary as a judgment for the stressor. This can be viewed as a loss, harmful, challenge, or perceived threat. The secondary appraisal is when an individual makes a judgment for what they can do in response to a stressor, such as the outcome for employing a coping mechanism. Coping can either be emotionally focused when regulating emotions or problem focused to manage a stressor. Lazarus and Folkman's 1984 Transactional Model of Stress and Coping is widely adapted in scholarly literature across several, several disciplines, which include nursing, social work, psychology, and now includes an updated aspect from Folkman in 1997 to include an emphasis on understanding positive emotions for various ways of coping. This model informs the activity, Five Minutes of Kindness, as there is an emphasis for promoting students to engage in various ways of healthy coping strategies. Stress is conceptualized in the literature as an internal or external stimulus or an environmental or individual interaction of an environmental individual transaction and may include both good stress or bad. The literature explores stress for undergraduate students during the COVID-19 global pandemic as concerning and worsening compared to pre-pandemic stress levels in this population. Furthermore, the global pandemic is exacerbating feelings of isolation, depression, and anxiety with some young adults reporting a significant impact on psychological well-being. There are benefits for remote learning noted in the literature, such as providing recorded lectures, increasing flexibility and freedom, and possibly decreasing absenteeism. Remote learning can be rigorous and motivating if done well. This may take some creativity and adaptability for instructors. The transition to remote classrooms may be causing students to experience a sense of loss for their education and communal experiences that would have otherwise be gained during their undergraduate experience. The current lockdown restrictions and changes to remote classroom may make it more challenging for nurse educators to identify which students may be struggling with mental health challenges, stress, or worry. The American Psychological Association asserts that even when teachers are able to meet students in person, the use of masks may create a barrier to read students' facial expressions, as this may hide signs of stress or worry. Hussein et al. in 2020 interviewed undergraduate students in Abu Dhabi and proposed that post-secondary institutions ought to adapt pedagogies that prioritize student well-being and care during the pandemic. In healthcare education, the restrictions placed during the pandemic have caused a decrease in clinical hours for some students studying healthcare disciplines such as medicine and nursing. The transition for undergraduate students in healthcare to remote delivery for their education during the COVID-19 lockdown is described in the literature as affecting the health of students through causing a decrease in sleep and provoking feelings of stress and anxiety. Taylor et al. in 2020 asserts that nursing and medical students need to learn or utilize existing self-care management techniques to promote resiliency, to prevent feelings of burnout, an issue that may be further complicated by the pandemic. This was further supported by Savitsky et al. in 2020, who suggests that students who utilize existing coping mechanisms, such as humor, and display resiliency were reporting low, lower levels of anxiety during the pandemic. Educators are recommended to take a compassionate approach to teaching for undergraduate students during the pandemic, including the need for more psychosocial support and coping mechanisms, as well as recognize students' display of courage and resiliency.
Promoting coping mechanisms such as adequate sleep and maintaining a healthy diet in the classroom have been demonstrated to help mitigate stress that may impact a student's ability to focus on learning new material. Now, I'm going to ask that you reflect on enjoyable activities for self-care that you were able to engage in or plan to engage in during the COVID-19 lockdown that help promote feelings of being calm and relaxed. Usually, I set aside five minutes for students to discuss their activities. However, I will briefly pause while you take a moment to reflect on this since you're watching a recorded version of this presentation. So here are some examples as to what students have brought forth during our five minutes of kindness discussions. By providing a routine space online that encourages self-care and coping behaviors, learners become more likely to engage in this behavior and learn from others as to what hobbies they might enjoy. This also provides an opportunity for instructors to validate students' resiliency for existing strengths or coping resources that emphasize feelings of relaxing and calm using positive outlets as per Lazarus and Folkman's transactional model of stress and coping. To conclude today's presentation, Adapting a pedagogy that involves compassion and student well-being through encouraging undergraduate students to focus on self-care activities may help promote psychological well-being as per Hussein et al. in 2020. This activity focuses on students engaging in enjoyable, healthy, and positive coping techniques, such as that suggested by Folkman's 1997 edition to Folkman and Lazarus' original transactional model of stress and coping from 1984 to enhance emotional and problem-based coping. This may help promote students' coping, reduce students' levels of stress and risk of burnout. Students may be more likely to engage in self-care activities knowing that their peers and instructors are interested in learning about their hobbies and passions. Furthermore, students may learn about common interests between themselves and their peers, which may foster genuine connections and friendships between classmates that would more readily occur during in-person classes. Educators who consistently use this approach, for example, weekly, provide a space where students can collectively discuss interests outside of their education and may promote feelings of inclusion and cohesion among the group of learners. Students are also demonstrating strength and resiliency, which may be validated from their educators and make students feel seen and heard within a remote environment that may otherwise promote anonymity. For evaluation, Presently, evaluation of this activity has been through informal discussions for the usefulness of this activity in the classroom setting, to which students have indicated this was enjoyable and increased their engagement in self-care activities. Future formal evaluation of this activity is needed to understand the activity's usefulness for undergraduate students and to apply the findings to other populations. If you are an instructor and plan on using this activity in your online or in-person classroom, you may informally evaluate the effectiveness for this by asking the students if it was helpful or enjoyable learning activity for them. Students can provide feedback during class or via anonymous discussion forum. So that concludes today's presentation. If there are any questions, please feel free to email me about this learning activity or presentation. And thank you for your time. We'll move into the activity. We were gonna break into um, breakout rooms, but that's not necessary. Um, what I'd like you to do is to share um, what you do to reduce stress. In your in your daily life, what do you do to reduce stress? Um, Elizabeth goes for a walk. Justina cooks. I'd like to move into your house, Justina. Um,
I like to swim. That's my number one, but I seldom get to do it. So I substitute walking my dog. What types of crafts, Melissa? I do a lot of scrapbooking and I've been doing these diamond dots and sometimes I do cross stitch. Oh, neat. I love cross stitch. I do a lot of cross stitch. But Terry Lynn walks her dog and she ensures that she gets enough sleep each night, which is so important. Um, do you think you would use this activity with your class? Uh, please note that you can uh, also unmute yourselves uh, if, if you wish to contribute that way. Thank you, Estina. Hi, um, I just cut the tail end because I had to take a phone call, so I apologize for that. But uh, one of the things my coworker and I are planning, we both teach nursing in Nova Scotia, and uh, we're planning an orientation kind of day coming into second year because we know how stressful it is to really give students that opportunity to have a space, um, you know, where they can take care of themselves and they will take a course health promotion. Um, and community and part of that is about focusing on their own wellness uh, because they're entering careers where they really need to uh, build those um, skills and uh, take care of themselves. Um, we often those think uh, in how intense nursing is and <laughs> you're thinking about all the studying and stuff that they do, you know, are we really setting them up uh, for success? So I do think having any sort of tool to help guide them is important. Uh, this past semester, I had um, our student services counselor do a meditation session that was between classes. Uh, students actually asked for it the second semester, although there was a small group that attended. Um, they said it was very helpful, and it was just a quick kind of 10 minutes uh, in between uh, to allow them that time to decompress between classes. That's really neat, Terry Lynn. I like that idea of providing a way to decompress. What other ways do you use um, to help students reduce their stress? I was in a session yesterday with Garrett Richards and um, he asks for feedback from students quite often during the semester um, to see what's working and what's not working for the students. It might be around um, assessment, one of his teaching practices. Um, it could be anything to do with the course. And he tries to accommodate um, the feedback during the rest of the semester so that um, it will help reduce the uh, stress for students. Terry Lynn says, hopefully the meditation sessions will instill in effective health practices by modeling evidence-informed practices. That's good. That's good. Um,
what drew me to Jennifer's activity when she explained it to me was not only are the students learning about various ways to relax and to cope with the stress of school and, and remote learning and um, it's it's got to be stressful if you're in a program like nursing and you can't do the face to face learning uh, for your clinical skills. Um, you know that's got to be a real challenge. So. That was one thing, but the other thing that really drew me to this activity is that she encourages students to um, connect with one another if they have similar ideas, um, if they have similar de-stressors. Um, much the same as I reached out to Melissa because she enjoys crafts and, and I do a fair number of crafts. And that way students can connect with each other and form friendships around common interests as opposed to around their education. Um, and hopefully those friendships will reach out into their academic lives. Just looking at the chat. Elizabeth says, sometimes before lectures begin, a lecture begins, I tell students what the plan is and then say, before we get started, does anyone have any questions or comments? This gives students who are stressing about something a chance to express their concerns so that they can focus on the content. That's really good, Elizabeth. Um, it's nice to be able to address their concerns prior to um, the class so they can focus on the class and the class content. And Justina says, I used to do this as well, Elizabeth, just opening out the floor to let them express how they're feeling to make a difference, knowing that somebody's willing to listen. And that's so important. Um, sometimes all we need is someone who's willing to listen. We also had a comment earlier from Melissa, uh, who's an education student. I have just finished my internship at a high school. My cooperating teacher does mindful minutes at the beginning of every class. Neat. And what sorts of things, Melissa, does, um, does the teacher do what sorts of activities what sorts of can you give us an example and you can unmute to talk um so when we we're in class so it was interrupted by a covid uh, she just uh, at the beginning she would discuss what uh, self-care is and talk about these mindful minutes where she just wants them to put away their phone and take a few minutes to relax and allows them to do whatever they want to do without talking to be quiet and they can draw, they can journal, they can do whatever they want, but she just wants them to have a few quiet moments just to prepare for class and just to de-stress a little bit. And that's so important because we're always so rush, 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 that um, we often don't take that time to, to prepare mentally for class. Um, and 
and a lot of times students aren't sure how to prepare for class how to mentally prepare for class i know i tutor a few high school students and um until we started talking about ways to de-stress before class and how to prepare mentally for class and stuff they didn't have a when i first started talking about it, they didn't have a clue what i was talking about um so it was helpful for them to to talk about preparing for class mentally <laughs> 